Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. I recently introduced this uh, repeating bow to you. I call it the Instant Legolas 5th generation. And it is based on a very expensive children's bow or kid's bow. Uh, shooting really, really fine because of the great repeating function. Bang! <laughs> and um, of course because it allows such f uh, quick follow-up shots. Really people love it. And um, I love it too. <laughs> the only issue is that, of course, it is a bit weak because it's made for children, which makes it super easy to operate. But on the other hand, people always want something stronger. And I recently purchased this uh, Chinese triangle bow, really compact. It has 50 pounds of a draw weight, which is quite a lot. So it's a powerful bow, really, but not too powerful to make it un impossibly strong for the repeating mechanism. And I'm going to show you how I will make a magazine for this one. And I will also, also teach you a little bit how you can take just about any bow that you have and convert it into an instant Legolas. First of all, you have to settle on a certain arrow type. And of course, later on, you have to use uh, arrows with just two veins. So you have to remove, if you have a three veined um, arrow, you have to remove two of them and re-glue them so that they are flat. But also, you need to set the sight on the length. Now, a long arrow like this will not work for this bow, since, as you see, it has two kind of pulley systems here that make it impossible for the arrows to be fed from either side. So for this bow, the arrow must be longer than this one here in cut condition, but also shorter so that it can stack up here and is not hindered by the strings here. So I settled for the 15-inch arrows that you can buy for the Cobra R9 and R10 system. Uh, I like those because they, also, they already have two veins only, so there's no work to be done on those, except maybe trimming down the veins a little bit so you can build a flatter magazine. And I'll show you why this is the right length. As you see, in cock condition, the arrow is actually not hindered by the strings here. See, it's shorter than the strings. But also, it is possible to stick it up right on the string here. And this is important because this is basically uh, the mechanism to stack up the arrows. So the lowest arrow needs to rest on the string and only falls into the slot in cocked condition. So next you will need to find out how long the magazine will need to be and also how long the slot for the strings will have to be. And I recommend clamping in the bow into a vise with a little bit of rope. And now the next step, it would be better if you have a second person helping you because doing this as alone is a kind of awkward, but you can still do it. So what you do is you basically measure the length from the end of the bow till the beginning of the string for the first value. And in this case, this is um, 37 centimeters. And then you draw out the bow like so and you measure the distance until now, which is 80 centimeters. So you can also say that now 33 centimeters is actually the power stroke of this bow. You need to write down these values as you're going to need them to design the magazine. And of course, keep in mind for your bow, it may be entirely different. But these are the crucial figures. Now, if we look into the design of the instant Legolas, um, what you see is that you actually need five layers of wood. You need the inner layer, uh, you know, so that has room for the arrows and so on. You need two layers that are next to it. And then you need two outer layers because, you know, you need the room for the uh, veins and for the fletching. So it's one, two, three, four, five layers of wood that you need to cut out and design. And for the design layer, I recommend starting with thin wood. This is four millimeter plywood to design the outer part because the outer part will be most complete. The other layers will be less than that. <laughs> so these are the outlines for the design. The arrows will stack up like this. This is the extra slot space that you need to be able to cock the bow. This is where the slot ends. This means that here the string will rest so that the arrows can stack up on it. Uh, these parts won't be cut out for the outer layer, but they will need to be cut out in the inner layers since this is the room for the arrow to travel later on. 
And this is the part where you attach the lever that presses down on the arrows. It will be spring-loaded from here. And as you see, this has room for stacking up six arrows. And you can actually make this higher if you want more ammo. But in that case also, of course, it will be more bulky. And this is actually the end of the magazine. We have sawn out the first plate and also fitted it in a little bit. This is, makes really makes sense because you can't really think about all the little details beforehand. And as you see, I put it in even though, of course, right now the string is still not running in the slot. Therefore, it's a little pressure on the side. But you can already see that geometry is fine. And you can also see that when I draw this out, also the length of the slot is correct. And you can also see that the, I need had to cut out a little bit for the cables because they run like back and forth a bit. As you see, they need some play. And you can also see how nicely it fits in terms of the width. This would later on have very little play. So now we have to saw this out one more time. I like to start with a slot because then everything is still as solid as can be and not as wobbly as it will be later on. Now we sort out these parts, which are like the second layer. And as you see, it's almost the same, but it has cutouts for the broad heads and also for the veins here. Plus also, as you see, the slot is continued because that's where later on the veins will go through. So this, of course, we also need to saw out twice. And then there's going to be an inner layer that connects the two halves. And this ideally you saw out from a material that is thick enough so that the veins will actually fit because they need to accommodate the veins later on. After all five parts have been sawed out and glued together, we now have one half where three parts are in and one half where only two layers are in. And I can show you the principle, how it works. This is where you put in the arrows. And as you see, there is room for the veins and there is room for the broad head. And the arrows can slide down to this position, but they cannot go all the way back because that is where only the string can go. And if you release the string, then the arrow will be pushed out like so and glide out to the front. And if put together, this looks like so. You see room for the arrow, room for the cables, and this is where it's going to be attached to the bow. So now I mounted the halves together and also shaped it a little bit here in the front so that it fits through the riser. And now at this stage it is very important that if you put in an arrow and drop it down, it goes very very smoothly inside. Also, it should not fall out to the sides, but if you can't this to the front, it needs to glide out very easily, like so. As a next step, we're building this very simple lever. As you see, it has a little hook in the front so that you cannot dry fire the bow. And there is a spring. Ah, let me see if the camera focuses. So there is a spring that keeps it loaded. So when you want to load it, you simply lift it up and shift it a little bit to the side, like so. Then you put in the arrows, like so. Snap it in, and now the arrow won't fall out because it's under pressure. It sits right in here. And if later on I shoot it, it's going to work like so. <laughs> now the next step is important because we have to, sorry, we have to saw in a little slot here, 
like so because otherwise you won't be able to later on to install this thing onto the bow without removing the string which is a pain in the butt so it's so much easier here and then you simply fix it again with a screw to make it stable so now we clamped it in for the first time we haven't really mounted it yet just you know just use a clamp to fix it to see if it's done everything correct and what you can also see is that here in the end I filed the groove a little differently because this one here this I think would be too thick and the draw weight is too heavy to draw it back like this. Therefore I designed it in a way that you can put it like here. So until you're all the way here. And then of course it is important that you cannot see anything of the string anymore once you pulled it back. Yeah, the uh, arrow would now be in the downmost position and if I release this here it would accelerate it. We're getting to the final touches, sanded the slot so that the string won't be chafed and also installed little stoppers for the string because that's gonna hit this with some force and you don't want this to hit the thin plywood that you have here so it's a little bit uh, reinforced so this is the finished instant Legolas <laughs> based on the cheap Chinese triangle bow <laughs> let me show you its features well first of all as you can see I still haven't painted it and that of course is easy you can uh, paint it black or whatever or give it a camouflage paint job um, I think black would be most fitting for this device here so but I left it unpainted so that you can really see it first of all I want you to notice that the string really is in the middle of this thing so this string here runs um, through the uh, slot without any chafing which is really important for the lifetime of the string um, also um, because of course the original side no longer worked I attached a red dot side yeah, right here. As you can see, I attached it to the side without actually changing anything in the original bow at all. And um, of course, it sits like everything in this bow right in the middle. So this means everything is centered in this bow. Also note that the, uh, the, the cables here are running very freely, so they're not touching the body of the instant Legolas magazine as well. And as you see, these arrows are perfect for the job couldn't be any longer and couldn't be much shorter either. <laughs> and of course there's one nice feature on this bow and this means it also has adjustable power. Now it's adjusted to like the softest power which makes it super easy to draw and actually a joy to shoot. And as you can also see this is a lot thicker than the magazine that I used for the small uh, youth bow and that is because I wanted to use the original uh, EK archery arrows without sure cutting down on the on the veins and this means it's now thicker but it doesn't matter because this one here you shoot by pulling from underneath like so switch on the red dot side first but you can also shoot instinctively of course you simply pull it back until you hear the typical clack then you take aim and shoot and you can do this again of course very very easily <laughs> and it's a ton of fun and of course even at the uh, lowest draw weight because of the long acceleration you have good power and as you see you draw from underneath therefore it's not as painful as on the other instant Legolas so this is the big advance here that we have because this one is really easy to do like so and also I can aim the very traditional way but using the red dot side and that is of course a lot more accurate. Let us clock the speed of the arrows and we're starting with the weakest condition and how I did this is I turned these screws out five times so just one more time and it will fall apart. <laughs> 58 meters per second let's do one more Sixty meters per second, and one more. Sixty-two meters per second. Seems like it's getting a little faster as the magazine empties. That's probably the case because the spring is, uh, of course, getting weaker as the magazine empties. Now let us shoot the mini instant Legolas with the youth bow, which happens to be a lot lighter in comparison. And this one only has one setting, which is full power. It's a lot less comfortable to draw, I have to say. 
51 meters per second. 52 meters per second. So even at the weakest setting, the uh, triangle bow is stronger, has more power than the youth bow. But it is still kind of cute and very lightweight. All right, time for the power shots. Now we've closed these gaps fully by turning in these screws all the way. And it's time to check how fast the arrows fly now. The draw is harder, but it's still controllable. And I would say, because you don't have to, to set your fingers apart, it is more comfortable to draw this bow at full power than the kid's bow at the reduced power. Sixty-five meters per second. Sixty-seven meters per second. Sixty-six meters per second. So that's sixty-six meters per second on average. That's really fast, I think, for a small bow like this one here. By the way, isn't that an amazing little radar, a radar chronograph? made by FX Air Guns, will be in the store very soon. I think it's already shipping in the UK and soon in Germany. Okay guys, now we'll go for accuracy. Distance is about 12 meters. And uh, I'll fire all six shots that are in the magazine. That's it. And now you see, you can't cock this again because it's stopped by the lever here, which has a hook. Yeah, I think I have to, of course, you know, make it shooting a little bit more to the right and a little down maybe. And that's because I shot it in uh, with the uh, weakest setting. Therefore, it's normal that it's shooting a little bit higher. But other than that, I can cover the entire group with my flat hand, which isn't bad for my poor archery skills. <laughs> so the sixth generation instant Legolas. I think we're making progress to answer your questions. Uh, this one will not go into production. Uh, I'm absolutely sure about this, uh, simply because this is not a model that I happen to have contacts to the manufacturer. Uh, but in any case, it's really fun. And I hope that this little tutorial has helped you designing your very own instant Legolas. Since as you've seen, for making plans, you need to know the exact length of the arrows that you, want to use, that you want to use and of course the specifications of the bow. Other than that, this is nothing but a simple box, stacked arrows with a spring pressing down on them. That's all it is. So it's really nothing big and I think you can do it at home. Anyway, this bow here I think is a really nice fit for the Instant Legolas since it's also full of uh, archery inventions like this uh, shoot through the center riser and also the compact size. But um, it is, of course, not achieving the 50 joule that it achieves with the original, much heavier arrows. Uh, this is only getting to about, I don't know, maybe 35 joule. And that is probably because, first of all, there's a little bit additional friction, since this is pressed down with a, uh, with a spring. That's not the case when you shoot a single arrow. And also, what you should not forget is that this may be very close to the maximum speed that this bow can do. This means that even if I, could, if I would go lighter on the arrows, these are 16 gram arrows, uh, I think even if I would go lighter, it would probably not shoot any faster. We've seen the maximum of these visors. Don't forget this is a $200 bow. You can't compare it to a $1,000 masterpiece. But other than that, I think it's beautiful. And I actually enjoy shooting it very much because it's kind of a sexy thing. <laughs> and accurate. Wow, so much fun. I can't stop doing it. <laughs> and I hope you like it because I certainly do. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Thanks then. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I got one more. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>